Morning. I'm watching Country File on BBC last night. It's showing lots of uh, flooded areas, uh, especially in Scotland, Lake Districts. And I'm just going to paint a, a sort of a, a hilly, mountainy scene with peaches. Uh, can't get away from water reflections and that sort of sort of scene. They seem to be popular, so I'll. Uh, I'm painting on this. Uh, these half the size that I was. These are about uh, eleven by seven and a half inches or thereabouts. This is two hundred. I think, uh, I think it's, it's a two hundred pound spiral Langton paper. The Langton, it's English British made. Thaler Brownie. It's a good paper, but I, 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 I just I just put a block of it a couple of years ago, two three years ago, and I I've never really used it. I've been using the Fabriano, the cheap, much cheaper paper for the for the wet in wet anyway. So I'll give it a bit of a wet. Okay. Just getting myself organised for Monday morning. It's cold and wet and miserable today. Hey, right, okay, so a bit of burnt sienna. Uh, raw sienna, sorry, just to give a little a warm over the whole painting. Leave some areas of white just for a bit of, a bit of sparkle. So I put a bit of, a, a bit of uh, ultramarine low down I think. Right, I'm repeating in the water down below what I'm putting in the sky. So we'll have some cloudy stuff, so a bit of paint's great with that. My paint's a bit uh, uh, nice and damp. Just getting the bit of shadow under there's these. Okay, that, that'll do. Right, I'll give that a bit of a, a dry. I don't want the paint to disappear into nothingness on the horizon, so I'm just so take your headphones off. If you're listening on headphones, don't blast your ears apart. Just to take a bit of a shine off the paper, so we'll put in a bit of hilly stuff. We'll use those colours, do this a bit of blue and uh, and we'll vary that. Put in some Just let that dry off a bit. I'll put a bit of a bit of a hill on the right here. Okay. Let's just bring that across here. No, I have a tendency to go uphill. So now, while that dries off, I'll hold that. Yeah, I'll give it a bit of a help. Hold on. Mm -hmm. 
See, whilst this paper is buckling us slightly, I, I haven't had to re-clip it. Just for what I will, but just to show the difference between uh, 200 pound paper and 130 pound paper. Okay, let's put in a bit of an island on that side. This is a bit burnt sienna. Now try to keep my beach on here straight and I'll put in a bit of a, a bit of raw sienna. I've got a, my table, a little table here, sticking out from my main table and I've got a bit of hardwood. It's a tray, it's an office table that I got some years ago. Right, I'm, only I've got this shiny bit of hardboard and then my, my blotting cloth was, uh, was sliding. So let's just put a bit of a beach on it. Just put some sort of sandy beach across there, and I'll put a bit of a, a bit of a reflection in there. I wanted to, just to show up uh, the reflection, but a bit of the reflection. But I, I want to leave a gap to show. Uh, I'm going to come further, further along with that, I think. Just using a bit of burnt sienna and Payne's grey. Right, that seems to be too f the wrong colour to be so close, so I'll uh, paint over that, I think. If you look at reflections on big lakes, you get a lot of wind ruffling, so you don't really see the whole surface reflecting. Well, generally you can have some ripples nearby, but uh, that's what I've really tried to, to, to do. But I'm not sure it's come off. Right, let's put some bigger stuff on, on here. I'm not quite happy with that. So a bit of yellow, a bit of grey, a bit of burnt umber. Come over that. Come across here with us. That's a bit better. Just this guy is. It turned into something else. I'm only painting an impression from last night's memory and then we've got, uh, got a beach coming across. Coming here wet and... Do some warm colours in the foreground, like burnt sienna, burnt umber. Modify with a bit of Payne's grey. All on the same brush at the, at the same time. All these lovely colours just 
to give a warmth to the foreground, bits of light red. And I'll do, finish off with a rigger. We can have some rocky pebbly things in here. See that? That, that paint's grey that used in these, it gives us some nice texture and anchors the foreground. It makes it look like there's a lot going on there when in fact there isn't. Okay, let's uh, clean my brush, get my card. When you try the scraping out of the rocks on some of my videos where I've, I've painted a lot of rocks, uh, it takes a little bit of practice uh, and you, you need to know when to actually scrape the paper. If, it, if it's a little bit wet, too wet, it will fill in. Uh, but if it's too dry, then of course it won't scrape at all. But you can always re-wet it. Well, we're putting some scrubby stuff here. That's just See, that's quite dry there now. I'm just dragging down, just want to show a bit of a wind ruffle here. All right, now we'll just, just lift out a bit of this. Not a lot, just... Okay, that'll do. Right, now with a rigger, uh, Use my number three rigger. I'm just adding a little bit of uh, Just little bits of rock and just roughy roughage on this uh, pebbly shore. It's quite it, it's a much rougher surface than the Fabriano. The paints I'm using are, as always, Cotsman. 21mm tubes, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey and burnt sienna. I know sometimes you don't always get the full information from just watching one video but I can assure you that everything I have to show is explained over 950 videos that I've done. This is the 950th. I was hoping I would get to uh, a thousand by the 28th of January, which was when I started this project three years ago. <coughs> All right, uh, put a couple of birds. Where would two be? They show, oh I know what they were showing, it was uh, the Sikh chef, the Scottish chef, lovely guy, he, he, he was cooking a brown trout in, in a bag of uh, silver foil on, on, on some, some embers that he'd lit on, on the production team, had, had lit on the shore and he was sitting there on his little seat and cooking this, this brown trout. It was a lovely, lovely scene. I've only just done a sort of a memory thing of it. Um, but I'm going to leave that. I don't think I can do much more to that. Um, but I, I haven't got the photograph in front of me of it. Sometimes I sit in front of the television with uh, with my, my, my phone camera, which has got a smashing camera on it, 
uh, the snap away just to give me an aid memoir but anyway I'll put that in a I'll, I'll sign it I'll put it in a mount and then we'll see see if it's any good they always look better in a mount of course let's put it there put a signature there just tiny little signature Just a, a Monday morning painting. Get me kick started. Let's, uh, uh, not too small. This one might just be a fraction too big. No, that's all right. Okay, so there's a there's a, a almost nothing picture there. That is not quite. Well, this is what it is. Uh, let's bring you round and we'll have a, have a look. So, just a simple Lakeland Scottish lock. You can imagine, I can't remember his name now, the, the chef, the TV chef. But he's a great guy, it seems. It's lovely to see a, a Sikh, probably born in Scotland, with a Scottish accent. Lovely. Uh, well, there we are. It's just a bit bent. Apologies for all the, all the splashes all around this old mount. Here, no. I cut it years ago. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Just a simple Lakeland scene in a Scottish lock, uh, based on a memory of of, uh, of a country file BBC film last night. Bye for now.